Good morning, everyone. Wow, what a great turnout today. I, um, Pearl, I think you, you did it. Um, so let me put my core water down really quick. <laughs> we can get started. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Les Harrison. Um, I'm on the National Brand Partnerships at Outfront. Um, I'm personally excited about this panel because um, I love it when brands tap into culture and really, you know, nail it. And, um, you know, in the at-home space, we're seeing this as well. Um, people, brands coming into market, really taking it over, fans and customers engaging, and we've kind of dubbed this prime for a time, so it's like this brand moment there. And, um, you know, that's when brands take center stage, and what better time than to introduce these uh, incredible ladies on stage. So if we want to uh, go from my right, we can, um, if you'll do me a favor and introduce yourself, um, what you do, and a little background. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Burke. I'm the director of brain marketing at Avocados for Mexico. So I eat a lot of avocados every day. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, um, so I work with um, our creative team and our agencies to build campaigns and build uh, the number one avocado brand in America. Hi everyone, I'm Sundura. Uh, I'm the senior director of brand marketing at Curic Pepper Pepper. Um, today I'm here to represent our lead core hydration brand and category initiatives. I'm so glad to see everyone have cold water, so I don't need to introduce my brand anymore. So. <laughs> um, as you all know, consumers' number one health and wellness goal is to drink more water, so all of you definitely drink more core. <laughs> Excited to be here today. Uh, we're doing a lot with culture. Core is actually a new and emerging brand that KDP acquired a few years ago, and excited to share what we're doing and learn from you all. Awesome. And I, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. I too want to encourage you to drink more responsibly. Um, <laughs> of course. I'm you know, Sharice Williams, Director of Innovation uh, for RTE's Ready to Drink uh, category and strategic ventures for Beam Suntory, which is the home of many of your favorite, hopefully iconic brands, uh, Jim Beam, Hornitos, uh, um, uh, Maker Smart, and of course our Suntory lineup, MVP, uh, and a ton of other great uh, spirits. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. So um, all, we're all encouraged everyone to eat healthy and um, stay hydrated, for sure. Um, so thought we just kind of kick it off today and, and get, you know, in, in no particular order, um, really the, you know, how you see culture um, as a brand steward. And we can just start with Kelly and, you know, y'all can um, go from there. Yeah, so I've been thinking about this a lot, and I think culture is really about creating these shared experiences and moments for our consumer that transcend, you know, the societal barriers that we put up um, amongst ourselves. And I think for a brand, what does that mean for us? It means tapping into these passion points. I think the 7-Eleven team did a really nice job of highlighting the types of passion points that your consumer is you know, into. And it's about attaching to those passion points and really building that brand love around that shared moment. Building on to it, I totally agree. Like culture, bringing people together is what we heard. We talk about the moments that resonate with your brand. Uh, one of the key things when we talk about culture is we really want to make sure we are understanding the moments that truly bring our target consumer together. Uh, so as we all know, um, you know, and right now, like everyone has their own personal moments they're engaging in, right? Like it is, uh, you may no longer have to just watch the same content anymore. So it is important as we think about our brands, what's the culture that truly resonates with our target consumer? And then the way we talk about tapping into culture is really about how can you create these moments that can not only interrupt your consumer, but can actually engage and experience and create an experience for them. Because now, nowadays, it's no longer about interrupting, but to truly, how can you create an experience that's truly unique and ownable by your brand? And I know we had some great examples today, so kudos to the 7-Eleven team. Yeah, I'll, I'll continue to build on that, and just add to culture is personal. It's the way we see the world, based on our, you know, our backgrounds and our uh, communities. It's a way that we connect with others, as you guys have mentioned. And in my role, it's really important for us to forecast how consumers will behave in the future, right? As I think about innovation. So again, if you're tapping into who that consumer is, the way they see life, uh, what they believe in, their shared values, you can ultimately, you know, connect with them at a deeper level um, that can transcend, you know, through um, the times. All really good points. And, and so, 
you've got this kind of macro view, right, of our culture and, and what it is, but then how do you decide like what events and what moments um, you lean into and you, 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 know, you either, either say yes or you say no, or you, you know, what's that process look like? Um, if you all would um, kind of give a little bit of insight to the, to the group on that. I'll jump in and say it's not, not every moment is your moment. Um, you have to truly know your consumer, your audience, and identify the moments that matter to them, right? We talked about this a little bit earlier. I think oftentimes we see larger cultural events, right? Um, macroeconomic shifts, and we think we have to respond to it or um, innovate against it or market against it. And if it's not authentic to your consumer, your tribe, your congregation, that ultimately um, looks to bring your product into you know, their lives, then you're gonna come off in inauthentic. So I think that's the key there, is like tapping into the moments that matter. I agree, I think um, that's very important. The first step I feel is truly be authentic, not only to the consumer and to your brand. That is this really something that resonates with your consumer and also is actually resonating with the brand and the message uh, that you're trying to communicate. So I think that's the first step. Um, for me, I think recently we had an experience like this and when I think about moments and tapping into culture is, uh, hopefully a lot of you have heard about the, the Tyler Water song. Have you all um, heard about it? It's trending on TikTok. It's, um, and you may be like, hey, it's water. Hydration is water. Uh, you know, hey, uh, should we tap into it? Should we uh, leverage it? And I would say the reason we actually tapped into it and leveraged it because I don't know how many of you know, but the cover of our album uh, featured a core dress uh, that, that featured a dress that was made from core hydration bottles. So um, we actually partnered uh, with a designer at New York Fashion Week. You've seen our innovation. We've launched Runway to Wellness. Um, and we also stand for sustainability. As you can see, our core hydration bottles are made from 100% uh, recycled plastic. Uh, so we actually designed a dress that is made from core bottles. Uh, we've launched it at the New York Fashion Week in September. And unprompted, um, you know, the cover of Tyler Waters' album, she's wearing the dress. So uh, we've reached out to her, given her a custom core bottle, we've posted it on her stories, and are yeah, continuing the conversation. But again, another moment where you're seeing it trending in culture, but as a brand, should you tap into it? Is there something that you should own it? And uh, is this something that's relevant for you? Yep. Yeah, I was just gonna add, um, you know, I think it's important to recognize what role does your brand play in that moment. Uh, I think for us at Avocados for Mexico, you know, a lot of people would ask, why does an avocado brand advertise on marketing's biggest stage? Like, why do we advertise in the Super Bowl? And, you know, the reason for that is, you know, first and foremost, we, we are one of few uh, brands that have the pleasure of being in front of the consumer when, you know, you're watching that Super Bowl, um, you know, commercial and also the, the game as well. I, I call it, it's all about the commercials, but it's the game. Um, but, you know, for us, the challenge we have as a produce brand is we don't have packaging. So really, it's about utilizing that moment um, in culture to as a branding moment for us. So not only are you eating, you know, the, the guac in front of you, but you're also seeing our brand on the screen while you're consuming our product. So it's about what is the role that your product plays in that moment. Fantastic. Um, so you've got these moments, you're looking at them, and like they come up, you plan for them as a tent pole, or they come at you and you either have to react, right? Um, but during our prep call, y'all had mentioned looking ahead and trying to predict the trends. Can you give a little bit of insight as to like how you, you know, do you have a crystal? Crystal ball or a magic eight ball or you know, what do you got on your on your desk to help you help you predict these trends? Definitely a crystal ball. Um, <laughs> but you know, and I, I think what we discussed is uh, your initial question was around speed to market, right? And I was like, uh, I may not be the best person. <laughs> you know, I work in an industry that is um, a lot of legalities, right? Um, that we have to work through to to ensure that we're a smart company. And so with that, sometimes it does take a little bit more time. Uh, to tap into cultural moments, but that's why it is important for us to truly understand who our target is, understand their value system, um, have um, agencies that support us that look at foresight and trends, and, and for us to predict, you know, knowing that our innovation cycle may take, you know, 12 months, 12 to 18 months, you know, what can we start working on now that we know will be relevant, you know, and, you know, when we launch that, we're right on time, if you will. So it really is important for us to study trends, study consumers, keep our panels tight, 
um, and can we keep our commercial partners on the uh, journey with us um, so throughout our innovation cycle I would also say it's important to keep legal uh, as part of our process early on as well so that way when we need to move and accelerate to meet the moments they're a partner you know, with us Definitely, I agree with that. I mean, trends are very important, right? You have to stay in tune with your consumer. I agree with all the sources we talked about. We talked about macro trends, we look, uh, look at long term, we look at short term, um, and social listening plays a key role when you talk about weekly, what's happening with your consumer. Um, and you talked about agile as well. Like, there's trends, but also how do you put the trends into action? How can you uh, move to the market faster? I think sometimes um, one other thing that's also important is uh, making sure the content you're creating um, can also tap into and be amplified uh, by your continued discussions. Um, a good example I would share with that is uh, we actually have launched a new campaign uh, with Haley Steinfeld. She's um, you know Academy Award nominated, platinum music artist, a great consumer for cold water, which is um, premium water for wellness trendsetters. Uh, we've launched a new campaign with her. And we really, um, as we are creating this campaign, we understood that she's actually releasing a new single soon. Uh, she hasn't released her music since 2020. Um, and we were like, oh, that's great. We would love to feature her new single. So uh, our ad actually not only featured a unique take on wellness and encouraged consumers to drink core, but actually was the first one to release her new music. Um, that was a great way. Um, we actually, um, that came in during our discussions. and. Uh, what that made is actually our ad was shared by our fans, reshared. We had millions of views, billions of impressions, but more importantly, it was a very authentic partnership, and we could tap into uh, you know, what we heard with, with our discussions and move very fast. Um, so it's truly important as we think about trends. Uh, I mean, definitely make sure you're planning for the long term, planning for the short term, but also as you're creating content, continue to keep an eye out and what's happening with your partners as well. Um, and make sure you're adding value to your <coughs> Yeah, I think, um, you know, extracting the most value out of your content is really important because, um, you know, as a brand, you can either, you know, create that cultural moment or you can react to the cultural moment. Uh, for us at Avocados to Mexico, you know, we planned, one of, I had mentioned one of our challenges as a brand is that people don't actually make the connection between the avocado, which everybody loves, everybody loves an avocado, and Avocados from Mexico, which is the, the brand. So what we had was a gap in brand experiences. People need to actually experience the brand. Um, so we planned an event um, at South by Southwest, which was called the House of Goodness, and we basically created an immersive avocado experience. I think several of you had actually attended the event, um, and we filled it, we created an avocado house, we had all of these different, you know, um, technology experiences, we invited influencers to also, um, you know, capture that content. One of the pieces of that experience that was really the most uh, just kind of exciting was that we actually partnered with Sprinkles Cupcakes. Uh, shout out to Michelle Wong, shout out to Pearl uh, for making the connection. Um, and she uh, helped us develop a, um, a custom, like a limited edition. And when I say limited edition, it was like 50 cup, oh, 250 cupcakes. Um, it was a limited edition run of a chocolate dolce de leche cupcake with an avocado uh, cream cheese frosting and so like we had no intention of that becoming like a national thing but then to your point about like capitalizing on those you know those moments and those uh, capitalizing on the trend it did so well at South by Southwest that we actually took it national and it became uh, we launched it on National Avocado Day it ended up becoming uh, I think a top 10 cupcake so we like uh, you know uh, beat out some of their, their regulars, but um, RIP Red Velvet, just kidding. No, we didn't beat out Red Velvet. <laughs> um, but I think that's the, that's the thinking, is that how can you take you know, something that you're planning way in advance, like a tent pole or like a, an event, take that content and then extend it into the rest of your calendar, utilizing the moments in the back half of your calendar or whatever moment is really relevant to the role of your brand. It makes sense. You don't want just that one event to be for that one day and then just the people that were there, right? You want to be able to extend it, make it bigger, better, bolder. Um, you know, during our prep call, every one of you mentioned how important partnerships was to be able to do that. Um, can you expand a little bit on that as to like why and the how? How do you choose the partners to work with and then, you know, 
why why them and, and kind of that, that whole process for everyone? Sure, I can, I can jump in. So, you know, part of my role, again, is uh, really transforming how Beams and Tory brings um, solutions and, and spirits to consumers. And, you know, through the pandemic, obviously, a lot of folks had to shift their behaviors um, and how they consume uh, with, obviously, the, um, the restaurant industry, you know, bars, all of that, taking a hit. So, Ned, um, you know, part of my job is to come in and, one, build ready to drink. Uh, so On the Rocks is one of our, our key, um, which hopefully everyone uh, has tried, but it, it's, it's a solution, right? It's a cocktail, um, curated cocktail for you that you can have for, you know, your, at, at your home that is consistent every time you drink it. Um, but we also look at partnerships like our, uh, the Lola brand, which is with Jennifer Lopez, right? So tapping into her audience, um, tapping into what matters to her, um, which uh, was, if anyone's heard of it, you know, uh, you know, when she launched, she had to communicate to her fans, hey, this is what I do, you know, um, and kind of share with the world, you know, a little bit of insight into her life, and yes, she does consume a cocktail every now and then, and so partnerships is huge for our business and for ready to drink uh, category, and I think you guys have seen that through a lot of the, the brands that you probably consume. That's great. Yeah, I do agree. I, um, partnerships can really help you uh, accelerate your brand growth. Uh, for our brand core, one of our key goals was to create awareness. So as we look at partnerships, we are really looking for what's the right partnership that resonates with our message, really find your balance, find your core. Um, we talk about what are being the foundation for health and wellness. So we were always looking for the right partnership. And as we think about this course journey, it was, um, you know, this is, this was acquired by Cure and Dr. Pepper in 2018. And we've come a long way. So initially our partnerships was truly to drive awareness and now it's also like, how do we even think about partnerships as we are expanding our portfolio? Uh, hopefully you've all tried our new innovation, right? Cone Hydration Plus. Uh, did anyone try Immunity or Vibrance or Calm? Okay, I see Marissa out there. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa, for trying it out. Um, yeah, great. She also holds it in our hand. Uh, it's awesome. You know, it's it's really an innovation that's truly reaching our consumer. They are really looking for hydration that does more, and it is for wellness on the go, right? If you are someone who, um, you know, is kind of having a slice of lemon in your water and needs vitamin C, immunity is perfect for you. You don't need to actually use that retail. You can actually buy Core Hydration Plus. Um, as we were thinking about launching this innovation, we were looking for the right partnership. And this year, we actually um, had a partnership that we felt was very right to launch this innovation. That's with New York Fashion Week. We were the official hydration partner for New York Fashion Week. We talked about Core Hydration Plus as the runway to wellness. Um, and when we talk about partnership, it's like, hey, choose the right partnership, but how do you activate the partnership, right? I know you gave us a great example about um, the partnership you had with Sprinkles and how you brought it in a unique way. Uh, one of the key things we noticed with uh, when we were partnering with New York Fashion Week is we, we know a lot of influencers are attending like New York Fashion Week, but they're really looking for a wellness break because they're going between shows. So we created a, a unique wellness pop-up experience. Uh, for all the influencers attending New York Fashion Week, it was a core wellness experience. We had core Teslas taking them between shows. They, were, they could recharge, experience a wellness break, experience core hydration plus, and then go back to their shows. Uh, I, I would say for me, the success is when you get content where you're not paying for it. So we actually had over 200 pieces of earned media content. Uh, that was fantastic to see and a lot of engagement. Um, so yeah, that was one partnership I'm so, so proud of and I'm happy to share with the group. And you should all try, uh, try my innovation. I didn't hear a lot of hands, so go ahead and try Code Hydration Plus. <laughs> also, uh, ready for see now, so I will, I will try it, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. It sounds like Brand Innovators is a good spot to get your next partnership as well, so shout out to the crew here. Um, you know, there's this kind of conversation that I hear uh, with brands a lot between, you know, organic content, influencers, and ambassadors, right? Like, there's obviously three different categories, but to, you know, a consumer, they don't know the difference. Like, so. When you're talking to your teams and, and sitting, in, in, you know, in these meetings internally, trying to figure out what route to go and how to, how, how do you, how do y'all see those buckets? And, and then, you know, what kind of parameters do you put on them to to say, hey, you're an influencer, and, or you know, we want you for a year, so you're now an ambassador, and you live, eat, breathe, sleep the brand. Um, just kind of help everyone understand how you look through those lenses and, and kind of choose those um, content 
partners? Yeah, so, I, you know, just to, I, I think it depends on what's the objective of your brand, right? Um, so we have partnered for many years with a, a brand ambassador who is you know, really a spokesperson to us now, Patty Junich. Uh, celebrity chefs, Patty Janich, and I think the benefit of partnering with a, an ambassador over the long term is you're building brand equity alongside the growth of that ambassador's you know, following and audience, so you're getting that reach from them as well. They also become well-versed in your brand message, so they can deliver your brand message with you know, ease and uh, expertise. Uh, we brought Patty when we partnered with the college football playoffs we brought her to um, Good Morning America, and she delivered, we were talking about tailgate and recipes, she talked about our brand like seamlessly. So I think that's kind of the benefit of going with an ambassador or a spokesperson. When we talk about influencers, you know, this is the wild, wild west. It, and I, and as a brand marketer, you know, I, I still, I love influencers, but I still struggle with like how precious my brand is, and I'm like, <laughs> You can't do that, you can't do this. So it's it's a struggle, right? Because you're like, we've got brand guidelines. Aren't you gonna read my 100 page brand guidelines book? No, the answer is no, they will not read it. Um, so, but I think the benefit of partnering with influencers is that authenticity, and you can get a little bit more of this, you know, you know, brand enthusiast real reaction from a human being who is utilizing their audience to shine a light and provide reach to you. So I think it really just depends on like, what is the campaign objective? What is, what's your objective as a brand? You kind of need both to still maintain that brand safety, but also have a bit more of that raw authenticity. Yeah, I would just, um, I was just going to say, just to build on it, um, I mean, we all, I mean, for us, I think we are definitely looking at the space because we know our target consumer, we talk about the Gen Zennials, is influenced uh, by the influencers and with celebrities, right? Like, they make their purchase decisions that are influenced uh, by influencers and celebrities. So this space is something we are looking at. And I do agree, I think, um, as you talked about, Kelly, it's a long-term partnership and you're talking with ambassadors. These are you know, fans of your brand. One of the key things for us when we're choosing ambassador is, um, do they already know our brand? Are they consumers of our brand? Um, do they love our brand? That's the first step, right? Like, as much as you're passionate about the brand, you want your ambassador to be equally passionate about your brand. And it's a long-term partnership for us. Um, as I talked about, our partnership with Haley Steinfeld, it's been fantastic. We've had uh, you know, great content, and Haley has been a true advocate because she truly believes in uh, wellness and hydration as the foundation, and she loves our brand core. Even before we reached out, um, she was a consumer of our brand, so it was fantastic. Um, and to your point, influencers, like, um, these are someone we engage with who truly have the scale and who have the engagement with the consumers we are trying to reach. Um, yeah, we definitely partner, we promote a brand through influencers, and sometimes you kind of have to see like what works, and it's kind of, sometimes there are long-term partnerships that you see these influencers are understanding your brand, they're giving out content, they're true fans of your brand, and you kind of make them long-term. Um, so you kind of have to decide based on, as you're partnering with influencers, is it a short-term or is it a long-term partnership? But both are spaces you know your consumers are engaging in, so I feel like we are playing in both spaces as well. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think the one unique advantage we have in spirits is that we often uh, work directly with the founders or, you know, the generations of the families that distill uh, our products. And, you know, I would say as you think about, again, a culture synonymous with maybe a congregation, the best person to preach to that congregation, right, is someone that's intimately involved um, with, the, you know, the creation of it. And so we're lucky with On the Rocks, again, our um, are ready to drink a cocktail lineup to have the founder who goes around spreading the gospel, if you will. Um, he's the best ambassador for us, um, who can tell you how he created it here in Dallas, worked with um, Southwest Airlines um, and many other companies here to really build that baby. And when we acquired him, we kept him, acquired him on the rocks. Brocco is still a part of every ideation that we do. He is curating the cocktails in the lab with our R&D team, and we're keeping him a part of the process so, to, again, innovate from a, a consumer-centric but also market readiness approach as well to ensure that when it does come out, you know, 18 months later, that it's culturally relevant because it's grounded in our values, which ultimately connects with the consumer's values as well. There's this drive now with sports, right? Like, live sports seem to be, like, the, the hottest thing. There's 
all everything that you can bring in, right? You got partnerships, you got ambassadors, you got input, right? Um, could you give everyone a, a peek as to how you know? Obviously, there's Super Bowl and there's you know. Uh, how, how, how do you look at the sports um, as a whole, um, and then specifically, you know, women's sports seems to be really rising right now, and yeah, oh sorry, and so <laughs> and so how are you looking at, at that as well, and, and and just kind of like give everyone a peek behind like the sports lens and you know what what that means to to your brand and how you plan to activate and, and those sort of things. We can get started. Uh, I mean, it's college football season. Hopefully, all of you were drinking Dr. Pepper. Yeah, UT fans out there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sure you all are, you know, uh, Dr. Pepper was front and center, as you all uh, saw there. So definitely make sure you're grabbing your Dr. Pepper and enjoying the college football games. Um, I would say sports is definitely important even for hydration, right? Um, you know, you do need to make sure you're hydrating um, as an athlete as well. So we've always uh, kind, of, kind of looked into the sports space uh, because uh, we do feel it's important. But one of the key things we've started our journey, though, as we look at sports is, like, how do we partner in a way that's truly authentic to our brand? Uh, so if I think about a partnership on sports, it started with actually 7-Eleven even played a role in that. We partnered with uh, skateboarding. Uh, because it was truly about balance, and as you know, core hydration stands for balance, find your balance, find your core. So we partnered with uh, uh, Skateboarder when skateboarding was first introduced, um, and then we really uh, tapped into that space. And then now we have uh, announced a huge partnership this year. Uh, so core hydration is the official hydration partner for USA Gymnastics. Um, as you all know, we are all about balance. What better perfect balance can be than gymnastics, right? So truly excited about the partnership. We've seeded that partnership this year. Um, you know, it is one of the most watched sports in Olympics, as you know, next year is the Olympic year. Uh, and we've started the journey, and uh, we are excited to have content. We're going to have, um, you know, a lot of uh, great content coming out, as well as partnership with NIL. Uh, talent as well. Looking forward to sharing all that with you. Maybe in the next brand innovators uh, <laughs> next year, uh, how you are bringing that to life. But uh, it's a, definitely an occasion that resonates with our brand, uh, when we are, we have definitely played a huge role in it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, you know I had mentioned we partner with uh, college football playoffs as well. This is our first year doing it. Or, yeah, our first year doing it. Um, and what we realized was that with the success of the Super Bowl, you know. That there's so many occasions to eat walk that we want to capture all of those occasions as much as possible. So it just made sense to uh, partner with uh, college football and make and make sure that we're keeping um, our brand top of mind in each of those occasions. Great. Um, we're running close to time, but so I thought I'd, I'd ask one more question and just to to kind of wrap it all up, right? Um, we heard a lot about bringing people together, you know, making decisions as a team, you know, bringing a lawyer in at the beginning, right, instead of the end. Um, so, what are your kind of keys to success here that you're, you're you know, that, that you kind of follow as you are making these decisions? Well, to me, we can't talk about culture and relevance without ensuring that we have diversity within our teams. I think that is hypercritical, um, especially as. Uh, well, I'll just ask a question. Who's a Swifty in a room? Okay. I'm not. I don't understand you guys. So, <laughs> so it's important for me. <laughs> but no, that's the point, right? It's, it's acknowledging where, you know, uh, who we are and who we aren't, and, and where we have, may have gaps in understanding a particular um, uh, culture or a consumer group. And so it's been really important for me, and I love that I have a few folks on my team here that we're diverse and we can challenge each other and build upon each other and recognize that um, we may need to bring in outside experts um, uh, or panelists and consumers. And so again, I, I really want to charge us to think about culture, diversity, synonymous, and ensuring that we can truly be relevant. Great. I would echo um, definitely on the team. I'm so excited that today actually my team is here. Uh, core team, raise your hand. So uh, definitely key to have a great team uh, to bounce ideas with, bring your ideas to life. So that is the first step to success. 
uh, and they are experiencing brand innovators for the first time. So talk about culture and bringing uh, people <laughs> together. Right? So uh, that's one. The other thing I would also say is passion and curiosity, right? I, I would also say we are all consumers of our brand. So have passion, have curious, like follow your consumers' channels, like go ahead, look at social media, like be your own curious self. Like I, um, I'm actually, uh, being given that I'm a Gen Z mom, I, every day I ask my daughters, like, so what are you watching on TikTok? Like, what are you uh, following? Like, whenever this Tyler Water Squad came up, she, uh, I was like, is that trending? Do you follow it? <laughs> yeah, 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 so, uh, so I would say be your own consumer, you know, leverage all the people around you, uh, know what's happening, be curious about your brand, and uh, continue to be open, and then leverage this community as well. I think uh, I've learned a lot uh, coming to these summits, so uh, keep coming, and uh, um, I'm going to go in a different direction and I'm going to say be brave and resilient. Um, as marketers, we have to put on our, our courage hat and because I think it's really easy to come up on you know these panels and talk about culture and how we build culture, but it's really, really, really hard because you're going to get so many no's. I remember when I was on uh, the Doritos brand. Uh, shout out to Frito Lay. Um, they had tasked me with like a, a 420 project, and I swear I was like, "This is going to be really hard to get across legal and PR and all the people that." And it, it's just you get so many no's, and so you have to be resilient. You have to have that passion to be like, "I believe in this idea. I'm going to be the champion for this idea." And then eventually, as you bring people along, you're gonna get yeses, and then those yeses will turn into advocacy, and then those at, that advocacy will be, you know, they'll help you champion that that idea. So, be brave, be resilient, um, and remember who you're doing it for. Love that. Thanks. Do we have time for any questions? Great. Yeah. Um, have you experienced any failures within those like big um, branding moments or like partnerships? If so, what have you learned from um, that failure and what did you do to proceed? I'll just repeat it real quick for those of you who didn't hear. So um, she asked if there have been any failures and the learnings from them. <coughs> no, we're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop, we're done. <laughs> Go ahead, you, you take that one. It's not like a failure <clears throat> per se, but you know, I think what Kelly was talking about, right? Be brave, be resilient, be bold. Um, even to kind of get that partnership sold in, um, you know, it, it takes time, right? So I would say that's when, like, when I talk about truly make sure, like, um, understand what, why that partnership is coming to life, how that partnership is coming to life, and continue to be persistent if you believe in it. Um, so I would say um, our partnership with USA Gymnastics. Um, it did take like um, a lot of discussions, a lot of uh, persistence, a lot of like, hey, why do we feel it's the right thing for our brand? Uh, it's been fantastic, as you know, Simone Biles has come back this year. <laughs> uh, it's been fantastic for our brand, and we got billions of impressions uh, by being a partner this year. Uh, but it took a lot of um, you know continuing discussions on why we believe it's the right partnership. So. I would say a complete echo, Kelly. It's like be brave, be resilient, be bold, and continue to believe in it uh, because that's how you'll overcome any kind of resistance. Yeah. If I can build on that, I think it's also important to have the right validation tools in place before you launch, right? And I think there's failure even in that journey of validating. Um, we are, you know, we have just launched um, Japan's number one RTD into the U.S. Um, and uh, it was also a, a pretty popular in Australia. So trying to localize that brand for the U.S. Um, was, is tricky. Um, it's a tricky assignment because, you know, it is it's a cultural um, a nuance that we're trying to uh, incorporate in doing multiple, 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 multiple stages of validation and having consumers say, nope, that's not it. Nope, not interested. Nope, 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 nope. I think that is, that's a part of failure too, but in the sense of progressive and learning, and, and ultimately, like I said, making sure you have those validation tools in place so that you can uh, feel fast in that regard and, and still ultimately feel confident in what you launch with. So that brand is 196. Uh, it's not here. Uh, it is not here. It will be in Texas, I think, next year. So really excited for you guys to try it. Yeah, uh, just to build on that, I think the key is, you know, failing fast and uh, kind of destigmatizing failure because when you fail fast, then you can get to better innovation. You can get to 
uh, more growth. You can learn from your mistakes. Um, you know, I think it's easy to look at other brands and you know try to hop on a similar trend or do something similar, and and what might work for that brand might not work for your brand. Um, and so it's just being able to recognize, hey, that's not me, and I'm not for everyone, and uh, just pivot and relearn and grow from that. Fantastic. Do we have time for one more? Sure. sure, we'll make it happen. Go for it. Um, I was just wondering how you define influence. When I hear awareness, I hear impressions delivered. And so like, what does this impact have on the brand? Great question. So um, what is influence? Well, I think for me, it's really about building brand love, and the way that we measure that is through brain preference. So we do an annual tracker every year. Not only are we measuring you know, the uptick in brain awareness, but we're also measuring uh, brand preference, and especially for a brand like avocados in a produce category where you're like not really choosing uh, a, an avocado brand, but it's having that um, metric move means that not only are we driving more unaided awareness of people see our brand, but they're also more conscious that we're a better brand than other avocados, which there are other avocado brands, I'll just say. But. <laughs> Not here, right? Not this year. To me, I, you know, we're in a, a, a category where it's not necessarily needs-based, right? It is a lifestyle, and so it's really important that we're adding value um, and impact to consumers' lives, uh, whether we're helping shape the moment that you're trying to curate. Um, so influence to me is synonymous with um, the impact that we're having on consumers. Whether you're here to you know, laugh, to be sad, whatever, right? We're adding to that moment, um, so I think that's important. Yeah, I'd say um, definitely I agree with the impact and also like uh, the metrics that we're calculating here. So you heard about the impressions, but we also kind of look at our overall metrics in brand equity. So every quarter we are looking at our brand equity. So once we kind of launch our campaigns and we are doing our marketing every quarter, have we truly moved the needle uh, from the top of the funnel to bottom of the funnel, right? Like ultimately we want our consumer to be aware, uh, like our brand and ultimately purchase our brand. So uh, are we actually moving from awareness uh, to actually down to trial is what we look at. And we look at it every quarter and we actually see is our marketing working? Uh, have we truly moved the needle? But then doesn't just senior leader just say, For sure, yeah. Uh, I wish we could have that every quarter too. <laughs> we do, the, uh, we do a marketing mix analysis every year, <laughs> and definitely you get sales data every week, right? So, in an indirect way, you know, is your brand working? Uh, but we definitely do an annual way to actually attribute how much of your marketing is driving sales growth. Uh, but definitely, you see the sales numbers every week. Yep. Uh, I would say the one thing I would build on is. Uh, when you're thinking about your objectives too, like New York Fashion Week, one thing I would say is one of the key things that was also something we activated is because New York was a key market and we had a huge share opportunity. So again, that helped us uh, really showcase the sales growth as well, even before we could get measurement. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. This was um, very interesting.